Good morning. Good morning. Welcome again to our fourth service back uh, as we conclude the month of worshiping the Lord online and in person here as you come and gather. Um, we celebrate today uh, God's continuous presence with us, whether we're watching online or here in present and seeing one another as well as I see different people showing up and, and going to their places or having to find a different place. So as you do that, and sorry about that, uh, so, but it's noticeable. It's like, oh no, they're not going to be able to sit in their spot. So, but as we do that today, we're, we're thinking and reflecting on the theme, eyes made open to see. Eyes made open to see and believe. And as we look at that th thought for today, um, there's various messages out in the world, and they compete. And so we're going to be reading and talking about the Old Testament lesson in Jeremiah and, and Matthew chapter 10, ja Jeremiah chapter 28. And we're going to kind of retell the story of the Israelites um, in exile to Babylon. Uh, we're going to be talking about Jeremiah the prophet and Hananiah, a false prophet. So with that in mind today, uh, as a wonderful, merciful Savior, uh, we're going to be starting our service with that first hymn of the day. Wonderful, merciful Savior, Precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. You are the one that we pray. always hunger for oh our hearts always hunger for counselor comforter keeper spirit we long to embrace you offer hope when our hearts have Hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we hopelessly lost the way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Hearts always hunger for, oh, our hearts always hunger for. Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for, oh, our hearts always hunger for. Please rise. We continue as printed on our screen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, forgiveness. therefore you are feared. 
Because we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition, and we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, let us now employ the faith of the Holy Spirit He has given us and go to our gracious Heavenly Father asking for His forgiveness, all for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God has given His only Son to bear the punishment of our sins on the cross so that we might know the peace of His presence now and in the joys of, heavenly, of heaven hereafter. And as a servant of Christ, I declare to you what God says we are to share with all those who repent. God says, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our intuit for the day. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of, of your, your face, face, who exalt in your name all the day, and in, in your, your righteousness, righteousness are exalted. exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. By, By your, your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. O Lord, have, have mercy on us. O Christ, have mercy on us. O Lord, have, have mercy on us and give us your peace. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and also, also with you. We pray. Lord God, we hear voices proclaiming false peace and promising abundant blessings in exchange for our lip service and loving intentions. Open our ears to hear the severity of your law, Lord, and our hearts to be overwhelmed by the mercy you offer because of the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading today is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, verses 5 through 9. Jeremiah 28, verses 5 through 9. The false prophet Hananiah. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the, to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet whose prophecies, peace, will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we hear the readings today, we're going to be going through confession and absolution and reading of psalms in between as a constant motion and preparation and practice of hearing God's word and responding. The Jewish people were in exile far from the promised land. 
It was in punishment for disobeying God. And then when Jem this is when it happened when Jeremiah confronted Hananiah. And we, we are, are in exile, exile between, between Eden, Eden and paradise, paradise. disobedient children of Adam, Adam one, one and, and all. all. People listened to the false promises of Hananiah. We, we too are guilty of listening to the false promises of the, of the devil. devil. The, the truth, truth is hard, and, and we, we are, are sorry. Forgive, forgive us. We read Psalm 119 responsibly. Look on my affliction and deliver me. For I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give, Give me life, life according, according to, to your, your promise. Political peace came for Israel when God allowed Cyrus to let the people return. And an eternal peace was made possible for us and all people when our Lord Jesus Christ paid for all sin, offering himself on the cross in our stead. For his sake you are forgiven. What is real by the grace of God is always good. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. This one, we're going to have to come back to the chorus once. Three. Jesus' name, I've been born again. In Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, I come to you. seated we'll be reading the epistle lesson and it'll be we'll be following along and we'll be responding in a couple various places did you push it did you turn it on hold it in it should be green or red it's dead oh, here, here's, here's, oh, here. there I am good morning sorry about that <laughs> The epistle lesson comes from Romans 7, verses 1 through 13. An illustration for marriage and struggling with sin. Romans 7, verse 1. Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to men who know the law, that the law has authority over a man only as long as he lives? Read for it up above. Thus a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another. 
to him who has been raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the spirit. What What then shall shall we say, that that the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, But when the commandment came, sin came alive, and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous, and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through that through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please rise. Paul here announces that our incorporation into the body of Christ frees us from our captivity to the law. That is why Paul points out that we cannot recognize sin without it, without it being condemned in the law. Looking, Looking into, into the, the mirror, mirror of the law, we, we recognize, recognize that we, we have become, become sinful beyond measure. measure. The, the truth, truth is hard, and, and we, we are, are sorry. Forgive us. Psalm 119, we continue. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statues. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give, my, give me life according to your just decrees. The severity of the law, which ought to have been meted out against us, was poured out on our Lord on the cross. The freedom we have is to bear fruit to God and for God, who raised him from the dead. Because of Christ's victory, you are forgiven. What is real by the grace of God is always good. Amen. Amen. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Our verse for the day. gospel today is according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Because we're standing for confession and absolution, we'll be doing that in response to the gospel reading for today. Do not suppose, Jesus says, that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone 
who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Please rise. Here, our Lord makes clear the turmoil that following Him and what it might entail. He calls up to take up our crosses and even lose ourselves for His sake in order to find true life, we confess. But, but we, we are, are sinful, sinful in every way, way. Not, not always putting you first. The, the truth is hard, and we are sorry. Forgive, forgive us. Our Lord grants us life according to His steadfast love, and He even rewards those who receive His imperfect, or excuse me, He rewards those who receive His imperfect followers. I didn't get the gist of that. I was, did you? All right, I'll say that one more time. He even rewards those who receive his imperfect followers. By the overflowing mercy of God, you are forgiven. What is real by the grace of God is always good. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please be seated. That the Lord would guide my ways To keep His statutes still Oh, that my God should grant me grace To know and do His will Order my footsteps by Your word and make my heart sincere. Let sin have no dominion, Lord, but keep my conscience clear. Assist my soul to have to stray, a stricter watch to keep. If ever I forget your way, restore your wandering sheep. Make me to walk in your commands, a most delightful road. Nor let my head or heart or hands offer against my God. Peace to you from God our Father, from our ever-present, our risen Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's begin with a short word of prayer. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and our responses to your word be pleasing to you in your sight. Lord God, we pray that you would open our eyes to see and believe, open our ears to hear and believe that you and what you say and tell us to do is true and good. 
Help us to face the hard consequences and results of our fallenness, our sinfulness, according to your word. And may you lead us and bring us through true repentance and live of life worthy of your name. In your name we pray. Amen. Previous to today's reading, they just picked out, I find it peculiar that they picked out four, five verses, four verses, chapter verses 5 through 9. And it's the words of Jeremiah the prophet and he's responding to Hananiah. Hananiah was a prophet. And as they came through there, now the people of Israel are already in Babylon. So they are already been in exile. And the Lord has taken most, not everything, but most of the, the articles in the, in the tabernacle, in the temple. And so they're over in Babylon. There's people over there. And now what's going on is God has now through Jeremiah the prophet and he is in the Jerusalem area and he's preaching and he's proclaiming God's word and now God is going to speak other words of warning and threat and so through Jeremiah he spoke words where he is going to now raise up Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon he's going to become a supreme ruler he's going to be ruling over many nations even to the point where he's going to rule over the wild animals for a time and God has his reasons and his plans and his purpose and he says now you nations if you don't submit to him and bow down to him he will now also carry you off and even the remaining articles in the temple and the people. So that was the word to Jeremiah to the people because God had already used him to speak to the people and they responded with not hearing, not believing, and God sent them in exile. And then nations around them as well. But then here comes Hananiah. And so time had gone on by. And time went on by and Hananiah now has enough of this. And he goes, before Jeremiah, before the priest, before the people in the temple, he stands up, he says, now listen to me. This is what the Lord says. In two years, I am going to break the yoke of, of, uh, the break of the yoke of the king of Babylon, and the people will return and sow with them the articles uh, for the temple. And Jeremiah listens to him, and he gives him a standing ovation. He goes, may that be the case. I wish and I hope that God would bring back the people and the articles of clothing, but nevertheless, through my time and before my time up to now, all of God's prophets have spoken not of peace, not of deliverance, they've spoken of war and being persecuted and exiled and defeated. And so, the true test of a true prophet is his prophecy of peace must first come true. And that was Jeremiah's way of denouncing Hananiah being sent by God to be the prophet. And that's how he spoke. And so in response to this, Hananiah goes over to Jeremiah, who incidentally in chapter 27 was wearing a yoke. Yeah, a big yoke. God told him, wear the yoke. So everybody knew who Hananiah was, but now he's wearing a yoke, a heavy cow horse yoke that they put on your neck, and he was carrying it and wearing it. If you look in the, just Google it, yoke of Jeremiah, and then you'll see a guy kind of walking around clumsily. And so Hananiah goes over, and, Je and Jeremiah has this yoke on him, and he's standing in front of the people, and he goes over, takes the yoke, and he breaks it in front of the people. He said, just as I've, have I done, so the Lord will do. As I've broken your, this yoke, so God will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar the king in two years. The people and the articles will come back. Jeremiah stands over here. Doesn't say a word. He goes, okay. And he leaves. And he's going away. And now the people have two messages. Which message is from God which message is not from God Jeremiah goes away and it says shortly after the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and it said go back Jeremiah and you tell Hananiah the prophet here's the words 
You broke a wooden yoke, but in its place you will get a yoke of iron. I will now put an iron yoke on the necks of all the nations, and he will even control wild animals. I did not send you as my prophet. You have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. I'm about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year, you are going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. Seven months, seven months later, Hananiah died. Today, you have heard God's word speak to you, a message. Jesus spoke words to you and me about how hard it's going to be to follow him. And he made a line of delineation saying, if you love your wife or your husband or your parents or your children and yourself more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you try to find your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. I don't know about you, but those words are hard words, aren't they? As I sit or stand and read the word of God with you, and I read those words, those words convict me because I realize by my behaviors and my choices, I'm not worthy of God. I'm not worthy of Jesus because I don't love Him all the time more than Laura, the kids, my parents, and other people, and myself included. I'm convicted in my heart, in my mind, in the reality of the truth that I'm not worthy of Jesus. And it's scary to admit that and confess that at first. But after God opens your eyes to see the truth, you go, oh yeah, I can be honest. I can be truthful. I can tell the truth. I can feel the hurt and the ache and the struggle in my heart and in, in the reality in my mind and go, God, I have sinned. I, I am not worthy of you. For please, forgive me. Yeah, all right, hang on, people. For Jesus' sake, yes, please forgive me. But if all my plead is, is please forgive me, it will only go so far. Because a voice that cries out, please forgive me, is a voice that cries out because it's been convicted by God's word. And that is a part of God's word, to convict us to get us into a position that we need to look to God and we need to need God. Now, I don't know about you, but in this world, there's more voices, more messages going on than that. I keep hearing words about, you got to love yourself first. Before you can love anybody else, you got to love yourself first. Before you, 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 accepting people, you got to accept yourself first. You have to forgive yourself first before you can forgive everybody else. And, and I listen to that reason and that rationale, but it just doesn't hit home. Because that's the problem. The very problem. Personally, reading God's Word, I think it's a lie. I think it's a deception. I know there's a message of prosperity, wealth, and success, and peace, and unity, and love. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace on the earth. The result of me coming to the earth is division, faction. It's, it's going to cause disunity. In fact, Relationships that as close and tight as family will be broken because the gospel 
will claim and cause division to those who aren't in the kingdom from those who are within the kingdom. And so, the word of the Lord today, as we gather in the Lord's house, is a, is a hard word. It's a tough word, first and foremost, for us as believers. For us as believers. And the Lord, and I know they come down and say, the Lord first cleans his house. And if it's hard for us to be saved, how will it be, how hard will it be for those who are outside of the Lord's house? Because judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. So today, we're reminded in the past of how God treats those who say they're from God with a message from God and they're not. There is a difference. And it's only the Lord and the Holy Spirit who helps us to see with eyes and hear with ears the truth. It's not our reason. It's not our understanding that helps us hear the word, see the word, and believe. It's not. We're not worthy. We can't. But it is God in his work of his law that will convict us of our sin. And the law is good. There's a reason why Jesus said these hard words to us. He said it for our good. He wanted us to come to the conclusion we're not worthy of him. And so his gospel and his love and his act of sacrificing himself on the cross is that much more loving and beautiful because he's doing it for people who don't deserve it, who cannot earn it, who are not worthy of his love. Nevertheless, it doesn't stop his love. And that's the foolishness of the message that we believe, cling to, trust, and point to, and would tell others, even to the point of persecution, even to the point of division. It is different. The gospel is different. Met with the confirmation students this past week. I shook my head. I covered myself pretty good, but I said, okay, what does the law do again? We just did a, sh we started with a short review. What does the law do again? Tells us what we shouldn't do. Okay, you guys agree to that? Yep, they all agreed. Okay, what else? Tells us what we should do. Okay, good. You understand the law. What does the gospel tell us? What you shouldn't do, or what you should do. But wait a minute. So, oh, I get it. The law tells you what you shouldn't do. The gospel tells you what you should do. I had a big old red button. Eh. No. The law tells us what we should do and shouldn't do. The gospel tells us what's been done for us. What God did for us. It makes no sense. But that's what the gospel is. What God did for us. This past week, driving on North East Alexandria on the road to Carlos. You go turn the corner, you go down the hill, you start coming up the hill before the first turn off and the farms that are right there in the first turn off. About going up that hill, I looked ahead of me and I saw two game birds in the middle of the road. And they were little ones. And I come driving up and one looked like it was squished. And the other one looked like it was trying to help it. And as I drove up on the truck, I moved over a little bit to the right, and the little baby chick moved out. And then when I drove by, I looked back, and I saw it go back. So I'm looking through the mirror, and here it went and came from the other side of the road, came back to the middle, and it was like it was cheeping, chirping, chirping. And then I went, oh, here comes another car. It's going to get hit. And it's in danger. And it looked like it was trying to help its other fellow chick. And I go, oh, it's going to get hit. And then it goes, keeps going. And then it darted back. And I slowed down. I was going to stop and stop my car and go, hey, wait, let's not kill the chick here. I, I'm sorry. But usually I don't do that. I don't know why. 
But, and so then I slowed down, way slowed down, so I can see it all happening in my rearview mirror. And it goes back, and then that's it. Here comes the car. It's approaching again. It says, that's it. I'm out of here. So it started taking off back this way. And lo and behold, the other one wasn't squished. It moved, went right behind it. And got off the road, like, just in time. I went, Oof, phew. I was talking to my daughter on the lawn, and I told her this. I went, oh, what's the matter? And then I told her. And she went, oh. In that same spirit. Cheap, cheap. Get up. Start waddle, walking, like, and follow Jesus. I can't save you. I would if I could, but all that will happen is I'll get squished just like you if I keep squatting here in this middle of this road of death. Cheep, cheep. He gave you those little legs of faith to waddle yourself right off this road of death and going to hell. Now get up. He gives you life. Cheep. He will keep you new. He'll keep you in the new life forever. Cheep, cheep. Get up. Go find your life. Follow Jesus. Start listening to him. He will help you. He will save you. Cheap. He died for you. He saved you. He'll give you new life every day. Reading this first and then watching that event happen in my life, I was amazed at my story and God's story coming together in the middle of a road with two game chicks. I was amazed that that baby chick wouldn't leave its mate in the middle of the road. And it got scared off a little bit by the oncoming traffic, but it refused to leave its mate. Even God in nature has animals looking after each other. It's in, it's in the nature of God's heart. And so just like that, Jesus became a baby chick to tell us we're loved and cherished by Father. And he died on the cross. He took the hit so we could see how much loved we really are. Uh, a couple days later, I heard a song, and I've heard it before, but this really tugged at my heart because it kind of concluded the, the week-long preparation. I didn't know this, but the way things worked out, uh, I had my sermon done by... Monday, and I had to leave by Wednesday, our Thursday morning, to help see our second grandchild in Spearfish, Ezra, Ezra James Schiller, and, and then we came back late last night, and I was amazed at the song, and it was Zach Williams and Dolly Parton. If you haven't seen this, watch it. Now, don't just listen to it, watch it, because the song is, There, is Je there Was Jesus. And these two people sing the lyrics of being in their life and on their journey in this world and in this road of loneliness and this road of darkness and this road of falling down and even after failing. There was Jesus. He was always there. He never, ever leaves us. He will always welcome him in his arms. Eyes made open to see and believe. God does that. Not you, not me, and not this world we live in. God does it for our sake. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep our faith that he's given to us in him today and into eternity. Amen. Our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with the glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers of the church for the day, um, it'll be the responses will be various petitions, and I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, we respond with, hear our prayer. Please rise. We now pray for the church of God throughout the world and for people, various people, all according to their need. In Jeremiah's day, most of the Israelites were in exile to Babylon. Lord, we pray for people who are displaced from their homes, their communities, families, spouses, relatives, and even countries. Lord, we ask that you would use the efforts of humans throughout this world, that you would level the playing field, that where people lack, you will fill. We pray that you would open eyes of the world's power brokers and open their hearts and minds to see people's plights and their needs above their own political agendas and views and even aspirations. We pray, Lord, that you would break sovereign our powers here, supreme powers on earth, and that you would use them for your goals, your purposes in this world. Lord, in your mercy, your hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we have heard that prophets regularly prophesied war, famine, and pestilence. Lord, we pray for people who are refugees throughout the world because of warfare. Those people who are lacking basic necessities of life, food, drink, clothing, shelter. We pray for those who are dealing with long-term illnesses or sudden emergencies. We lift them up to you, Lord. And we pray that you would raise up compassionate people in various jobs and, and, and areas and relationships to provide food and clothing and shelter and even medicine, especially the places where our, all are needed. 
We pray that you would guide and lead and empower emergency and medical people throughout the world in various locations and those who are tendered, who are cared for under their care. We lift them up to you and we ask that you would open our eyes to see opportunities how we can serve our fellow man, our brother, sister, neighbor in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Lord God, you have told us that we belong to one another in the body of Christ. You've told us and you respond, reminded us that we die to sin through the law, which is holy and right, and that we see this and understand this so that you would lead us to come to you so that you would grow in us and help us bear new fruit of life and new life. Teach us how to drown our old nature and that you would raise up our new nature in us to be holy and pleasing in your sight and also to be various fruits throughout the world and through people in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would strengthen us in the bond of unity and fellowship and peace and help us serve together with our various times and talents and treasures and abilities. Lead us, Lord, to participate and do our parts, each of us doing our part as a body working together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up these people in our hearts, in our minds, that we say so now. We thank you, Lord, for life and eternal life you've given to us through Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you for teaching us and showing us and telling us and displaying to us your great love that went to great lengths to show us how special we are to you in the Heavenly Father's sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, your timing, and your ways. And now we also pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be be your name. name. Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your will will be done, done, on earth as as it is is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread, And And forgive forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver deliver us from from evil. evil. For thine is is the kingdom, kingdom, and the power, power, and the the glory, glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God the Father who promised lasting peace, And God the Son, whose death and resurrection have made that peace real for all who call to Him in faith, and to the Holy Spirit, who has opened our eyes that we may believe. May He bless you and keep you in His care today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Hmm? Yes. One we confirmation. Are in eternal, the day of March has come. Henceforth, the great of conquest, your tents will be our home. Through days of preparation, your grace has made us strong. And now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King Eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud crashing, nor all of stirring drums, but deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom comes. Lead on, O King eternal, we follow not with fears, for gladness breaks like morning, Wherever your face appears, your cross is lifted over us. We journey in its light. The crown awaits the conquest. Lead on, O God of mine. He's getting on here. 
Go in peace as you serve our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. One announcement, I think. You know what, those of you who were here last week, I remember what my uh, announcement that I forgot. What was it? Anybody? Come on. One, two, three. Happy Father's Day, fathers. <laughs> happy Father's Day. Huh? A week late. So happy Father's Day. Yeah. I told my father you said happy Father's Day to him. Please do. Please do. All right. Oh, cool. I may even say happy Father's Day to the ladies as well. Happy Father's Day. I guess it's a, cel- it's a thing to do. Uh, we're going to have confirmation on the second week of July. So not this coming week, the 5th, but the following week, the 12th. Uh, huh? Yeah, with communion. That was the big one. Uh, working out communion. Uh, we'll serve the confirmants with their families up front. And then after that, we'll go from inside pew to inside pew, and they'll go, right now anyway, they'll hand out the elements to you, and then we'll receive the Lord's Supper together, okay? Uh, That's what the elders decided to do, sticking with it. Uh, Any other announcements at this time? It's warm in here, or is it just me? Let's get out of here. (laughs) Have a great day with your Lord.